the saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. Personally, to my teacher, Master Tuakok Sui Mahagu Jumailing, we thank you for divine light, divine love, divine guidance, help, healing, and divine protection. We thank you in full faith. So it is. All right, so before we do our meditation, uh, let's just uh, study a few things. And uh, lately we've been quoting the teachings of the Lord Buddha, and we'll make it applicable in everyday life. One of the reasons why I love quoting him is because they're simple and immediately applicable. And if you think about it, it's amazing. 2,500 years ago, man, that's 2,500 years ago plus that the teachings were given, yet they're super applicable today. And the way I look at it is, you know, things, people try to make things complicated, but in reality, the powerful things in life are the simple ones because there's no wasted effort. So one of the things he said is, if you light a lamp for someone else, it will also brighten your path. Okay? Let's repeat that. Let me just read it so I'm not making things up. If you light a lamp, or flashlight, or torch, <laughs> or, or a neon light, whatever you call it. If you light a lamp for someone else, it will also brighten your path. And I'm sharing that because it's contrary to what most people talk about these days, especially in social media. A lot of people focus on I, me, you know, what's good for me? I deserve this. I deserve that. I mean, you just, <laughs> I'd have to, to go into much detail. You just read most of the posts people put. You know, people always focus so much. Oh, I'm this. I deserve that. And yet, you notice, it doesn't make, me, make them happy. You notice that? Because it's the same post. And then before you know it, somebody says, yeah, man, I deserve this. And then... Five, six posts later, you see the same people say, yeah, man, I know, I deserve this. I'm going, well, okay, if you figured it out, you should be happy by now. The question is, how come you're not content? It's very simple. When you focus on the I, and most people, as we already covered, their perception of the I is not the correct I. The I that they identify with are the desires or the tendencies of the body, Right, whatever the body wants to look good, to look hot, to look whatever, right? To feel this, feel that. Emotionally, to be emotionally, I guess, get the attention of people, and mentally, you know, to think that they're learning something new. Nothing wrong with that, but the mind just has a tendency to grasp stuff. So if you add all these three, this is the construct of what most people think the I. Well, guess what? If that's what you're trying to satisfy, you'll never be content. That's why one of the main lessons we want to share with all of you in this channel as we talk is like, when you say the word I, define it clearly. The I is the mover of the body, feeler of the feelings, thinker of the thoughts. And within that I, which is made in the image of God, a pure spiritual energy, have the potential for greatness. And so when you do your meditation and spiritual practice, when you return back to who you really are, the I, most of you go, yeah, in that deep stillness, I seem content. I don't seem to need anything. Exactly the point. So when people are so focused on I, 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 me, 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 I deserve this, you know what happens is because the body, the emotions, and thoughts are controlling their life. So the key is to first return to who I really am. I'm the spiritual self. Observe the body. Ah, it's the body, the emotions, and thoughts. Okay, these body, emotions, and thoughts are looking for attention. Because of a traumatic past, so therefore, after, so in other words, as you observe, you go, wait, these are the needs of the body, the emotions, the thoughts, the vehicles, not the I. The problem is when I allow these to run my everyday life, then I keep looking, waiting to put something in here to satisfy this, and it's never enough. True? Not true. But when at some point you have those stillness, periods of stillness and realization, I'm the spiritual self, and when I leave my body, these things I can't take with me. So why the heck am I spending so much time going crazy of satisfying them? Right? And then at some point you go, ah. So you look at the world completely different. Then you start to realize, okay, you know, I strive to be better financially, I strive to be better with my health, my relationships. All those you're striving, in other words, there are means to an end. You're striving to be better in all these areas, 
not to be recognized or, oh, yeah, man, all that. That's all good, but you also realize because all of these things allow me to be a better person, allow me to be able to serve others. Of course, in, in the process, by helping other people, because that's my objective, my life is blessed. That's one of the reasons why, you know, I was guided. Again, I know nothing. <laughs> I'm just guided, okay? Um, that's why when I read that quote, I said, that should be, that's just, that's interesting. When you light someone's path so they don't fall, your own path is lit. And when I was meditating, I go, you know, that is so true. When you're so busy helping other people, making their lives better, making them happy, part of you is like, life is good. Because no matter how much I'm complaining about, the fact, the fact that that person needs help, I'm better off than them. Think about it. One reason why the feeding program in um, Pranic Healing was so successful before, and it still is in many parts of the world, is the comments we got from a lot of people who got started. They say, yeah, you know, especially the people who have financial problems, people who are sick or whatever. When they go out and feed hungry people, one of the main comments they come back is like, what the heck am I complaining about? I have food to eat. I have roof on top of my head. I can enjoy life. And here I'm complaining when these people don't even have anything to eat. So, guess what sets in? Gratitude. Gratitude. What did Tony Robbins say? I was, I was just reading it the other day. Trade your expectations for appreciation. I go, wow. I've heard that many times from him and he just sunk in, you know, repetition, <laughs> repetition, repetition. And I realized, yeah, the more we help others, the more we appreciate what we have. I know this is going to sound bad. I know I'm not supposed to cuss on, online. I normally don't anyway, but this is just to kind of drive the point home. Stop bitching. <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't think I'll be uh, kicked out of YouTube or whatever, but that's what it is. Stop bitching. Stop complaining. Stop complaining that you don't have enough. Be grateful with what you have. And you show that gratitude by trying to help other people. Then you know in this, your perspective of life will change. Because now you're able to go beyond what's going on in your life and see what other people need. And the I, the real I, not this fake I, the social media says, I need this, I want to be recognized, blah, 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 and all that nonsense. The real I, the spiritual self, get to realize, I am complete. I am made in the image of God. These are just circumstances that happen in my incarnation life, this lifetime. So I'll deal with it. But in the meantime, when I focus on like other people suffering, I go, yeah, I should be grateful for how I'm blessed, what I'm blessed with. And let me see what I can do to be of service to other people. So at that point, the soul becomes the big boss. Make sense? That's why I remember one of the teachings, my teacher, Grandmaster Talk, she said, when you give money to charity, not only does it generate good karma, it allows the soul to regain control over its desires. Okay, let me break it down a little bit for you. We work hard for what we have, right? Let's say money, for example. The fact that you work so hard for it, this is mine. Then you go, I work hard for it, but somebody ends up here. We give it away. It doesn't make sense, right? It doesn't make sense, but somehow, when you do that, you have the, because it shows, listen and listen carefully, okay? This is very, very critical. It shows that even though you work hard for this money, you attach with it at that time, it does not control the eye. The fact that I work hard for it, okay, I earn, I don't know, how much dollars, euros, or whatever your money, your currency is, you go, okay, I made all this money, but I'm willing to give part of it away. It shows the soul is in control. That's why when you give money to charity, you do service to others, in the background, 
it is the soul, the spiritual self, that's the big boss. Because at that point you go, yeah, you know, I want money, I want recognition, I want this, I want that, but I'm going to temporarily set it aside and whatever resources I have, I'm going to share this with these people. And somehow I feel good. The fact that you can temporarily set aside these desires, whatever you call them, and nothing wrong with having them as long as they're not excessive, right? And they don't control you. The fact that you can set it aside and say, okay, let me focus on helping these people first. Let me focus on my attention, my time, my resources on helping others. In the background, part of you realize that, yes, I can do this. I can do this. I just did. That's why the more you do service to others, the more the soul has control over the body, the emotions, and thoughts. And when all is said and done, when it's time to leave your body, you can take any of this with you anyway. Right? So why don't you go ahead and practice <laughs> before you leave your body not to be so attached. And let me repeat what the Buddha said. This is what the way my, my teacher explained it. It's not about, the problem is not attachment. It really isn't. Because, for example, if my body is thirsty, I drink some water, I'm, at this point, I'm attached to drinking that water to satisfy that thirst, right? Mm. I'm done. What do I do? I let go of it. And then I talk for another 15, 20 minutes. Oh, my body's thirsty again? Okay, let's do this again. Mm. So the problem is not attachment. The problem is the inability to detach when you're done. So life is a series of attachment, enjoyment, mm, detachment. Then do it again, and again, and again. So that shows that the eye is in control. That's it. Very simple. So as you light someone else's path, as you make their life better, you benefit. How? Because number one, there's a recognition of who is doing the service, the I. Number two, as your heart gets activated, because as you serve others, the heart chakra activates the crown. That's why when we do a meditation to hearts, we start by blessing from the heart or through the heart and then through the crown. What happens? As the human heart and the spiritual heart get opened, open more, more spiritual energy flows through you. So you get cleaned up and you have a stronger connection. So as you try to light someone's path by doing service, you become more spiritually connected. So you become more enlightened. And when you heal others, and this is a prime example, rule number one in pranic healing, we never, you heard what I said? Never. Write it down. Tattoo it to your brain. We never use our own energy. You know why? You're swimming in an ocean of energy. Why the heck do you carry a big tank? So as you heal other people, the healing energy passes through the healer first, then it hits the other guy. So literally, as St. Francis says, it is in giving that we receive. Simple, direct, immediately applicable. So I was meditating on those words by the Buddha. It's very amazing, huh? <laughs> very amazing. I don't know if that's that right English. As you light someone's path, you're lighting your own. That could be physically, right? When somebody's when it's dark, you say, hey, let's walk together. Let me light your path. As you light your path, you can also see where you're going. That's literally. Spiritually, as you help and serve others, you benefit. Not to mention, one last thing, and then we'll do our meditation. Service has a cleansing effect. A what? A cleansing effect. A show is so busy helping other people, your heart gets activated, your crown gets activated, the divine energy flows through you. At that point, even for that short amount of time, you have inner peace. I mean, just ask any parent. When they're so busy helping their children at that time, they could have back pain, back pain headache, and whatever else. At that point, when they see their child advance, and do better, what happens? 
It's all worth it. Right? If you're a parent, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You want to see who's miserable? Easy. Look for someone who's only interested in the Trinity. Oh, that's blasphemy. No, no, not the God, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Trinity. I'm talking about me, myself, and I. You want to see somebody miserable? Look for someone that's all they focus, out, focus on in their waking moment. Guaranteed, you see a miserable person. And that's why and the more, you know, I'm going through these posts and all that stuff, you know, to, to kind of get a handle of what's going on, like a, you know, pulse. And I go, no wonder people are suffering. No wonder they're suffering. Everything is me, 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 I, I, I. Okay, so I guess the message has to be, hey, get over yourself. <laughs> Make sense? Because when you're so busy with what the body, the emotions, and thoughts are craving, you'll never be satisfied. Never. Get it through your head. I tried. <laughs> That's before I met the teacher. That's why one day, this is many years ago, we're in a restaurant, right? I was telling Master Trump, Master, thank you very much for all the teachings and this and that and, and you know, for the blessings, for the information, how it changed my life. I was just showing my appreciation, right? And then he looks at me, he goes, don't you feel blessed that you found me? I look at him and said, Master, no. I am very grateful you found me because in the big picture, I know this is going to be a little airy-fairy, weirdo type thingy, hocus-pocus thingy, but in reality, in the inner world, your inner spiritual teacher is always hovering and helping you. The higher soul and your inner spiritual teacher is constantly watching over the lower self or the self that is incarnated working in the back working in the everyday world so the problem is not that you're not getting guidance <laughs> the problem is there's too much noise the body the emotions and thoughts are constantly hey give me attention give me attention give me attention so that's why the voice of silence <laughs> i know this sounds contradictory is muted So if you remember, one of the past uh, messages or talks we had was quiet the mind so the soul can speak. You remember that lecture? If you haven't, search through the post. It's there. If you don't quiet the mind, which is the, the wants, needs, and desires of the body, the emotions, thoughts, the soul could be screaming, hey, you! <laughs> Listen, <laughs> the teacher said this. Hey, you. You go, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> right? That message comes through when it's able to cut through the noise. Now, instead of having that message work so hard to get through, you clean out the crap out of the aura and the chakras through meditation, spiritual practice. Shut up. <laughs> Just shut up. Okay. Okay. Be still and listen to the voice of silence. One of the great yogis in Tibet, his name is Mila Repa. And um, you know, one of the images you always see, he's always listening like this, waiting for the message of his teacher, waiting for the message of the spiritual self of God, the spiritual hierarchy. But we're, if we're not trying to listen, we are drowned by the noise of everyday life. And then what happens? The only time we try to listen is when <laughs> some of us in our deathbed. Oh, I wanna listen now. Well, what happened? You just wasted how many years? What if you're able to listen earlier, like you're listening to me now? Listen to your spiritual self, your higher soul, and simultaneously using that information to help others and make your life better. What's heaven on earth? Shall we? <clears throat>
Through the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. Personally, to my teacher, Master Tokhoksui, Mahaguj Meiling, all the great ones, holy masters, saints, all the higher beings, thank you for your divine light, divine love. Thank you for your compassionate, purifying light and soothing healing energy. We thank you. In full faith, so be it. All right, normally we do meditation twin hearts in the morning, or the first session. And the second session, we do the great invocation. This time we're going to switch it around a little bit. We're going to do the great invocation. Uh, a lot of you have posted messages, sent emails, you know, on your on on these different platforms. You say, "Oh, please bless this country. Please bless that. Please bless me. Bless this. Bless that." Okay. <laughs> First of all, I'm not God. <laughs> okay. If you remember, uh, I'm not supposed to go through this. We just finished invocation, but anyway, you remember Jim Carrey in. Um, whatever that movie is, he's playing God, and he goes, everybody's, all these, uh, what do you call this? Uh, prayers, he just, yes, 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 yes. The world exploded. Yeah. I don't want to be God, let me tell you that. But, I'm j the reason I'm sharing this with you is, when we do the great invocation, we allow ourselves to be massive energy channels for God's blessings to flow. Thank you, Bruce Almighty. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, I can actually read. Thank you very much. Okay. Anyway, so um, when you do the great invocation, we allow ourselves to be pipelines to share these blessings with the world. And at that point, just taking that ginormous <laughs> fire hose and aim it at the places in the world that need help. And unless you're living in a rock, <laughs> there are many places that need help. Uh, in the big picture, the pandemic is not over yet, although some people, I don't know, in their mind they don't think so, yet people are dying. So anyway, it turned into political stuff. I ain't touching it. You just look, people die, period. Simple. Okay? You decide for yourself. So one, we do our, bless, uh, do our best to allow the blessings flowing through us to bless people in need who have been affected by the pandemic directly with their health, their finances, relationships, and so on and so on. We also are aware that certain countries are under extreme turmoil. What comes to mind is Cuba. And, um, you know, we're... We're saddened, we're shocked by the things that we come out of the news and what I've gotten messages from people who have friends that have uh, been sending a message how terrible it is. So we're going to direct our energy as the blessings flow to us toward Cuba. And then you also have people in Iran, people in Venezuela, South Africa. If I were to name every country that needs help, <laughs> it would be over an hour You're going through each one. Okay, so I hope you understand. Don't feel bad. Oh, you didn't name my country. That's why, here's the way we're going to do this. When you do the great invocation, you know what you do it three stand, uh, three times. Okay? The, you reset the, the, the great invocation three times. First one, we're going to focus on Cuba. Second one, we'll focus on Cuba again. <laughs> Third one, we'll focus on the energy to the entire world. So, in your case, if you feel that a place in your country or... Part of the world needs blessing. Let's include it there. Now, before we do the meditation, let me just finish it with this. When we do these meditations, we do our best to, quote-unquote, channel these blessings and this energy to these places. All right? You have to realize we're not the only ones doing this. <laughs> we're not the only ones. There are millions of people who are praying. Okay, just to wedge out a little bit, there are also billions probably of energy beings in the inner world that are working. Okay? So just keep that in mind. Don't feel, hey, he missed my country, blah, blah, blah. Look, I'm not claiming to be the savior of the world. I'm just basically helping in my teeny, teeny, teeny little way to gather as many people as possible to focus the blessings to one area. Okay? So, stop complaining. <laughs> because I'm actually, people, I didn't mention me. Oh, little children. Anyway, okay? So, let's do this. To widen that pipeline, let's do the I am affirmation as taught by my teacher, Grand Master Chok Sui. Okay? Put your hands on your heart. Put your attention on your crown. I am that. I'm not the body. I'm not the emotion. I'm not the thoughts. I am the soul. I am that spiritual self. I am a spiritual being of divine intelligence, divine love, and divine power. I am that. I am connected in one to my higher soul. 
I am connected in one to the divine spirit in me. I am a child of God. We are all children of God. I am one with God. That is who I came from. That's my true essence. I am one with God. I am one with all. I am that. That am I. Be still. We are one. We are one with the great spiritual teachers. We are one with all the holy angels and holy archangels. We are one with all the spiritual elders. We are one with God. We are one with all. And in this oneness, we offer ourselves to be vessels to bless the entire earth, especially places and people who are suffering. Open your hands in blessing. Let's chant Om three times verbally. Om. the earth in front of you, just silently follow. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of every person, every being in Cuba and the surrounding areas. Let light descend throughout the whole of Cuba and the surrounding areas. Bless every person, every being in the entire country of Cuba and the surrounding areas with wisdom with understanding, with clarity, divine intelligence, and discernment. So be it. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of every person, every being in Cuba and the surrounding areas. Let love, mercy, and compassion descend throughout the whole country of Cuba and the surrounding areas. Bless every person, every being with love, with kindness, with forgiveness, with mercy, with compassion for all. So be it. From the center where the will of God is known, let divine purpose guide the wills of every person, every being in Cuba and the surrounding areas. The purpose which the Holy Masters, the spiritual hierarchy, know and serve. Let goodwill and the willingness to do good descend throughout the whole of Cuba and the surrounding areas. So be it. Bless every person, every being with goodwill and the willingness to be of service to others. Not just talking about it, not just intending it but empowering every person to practice kindness, forgiveness, and uplifting of others, so be it. From the center, which we call the Cuban people, let the plan of love and light work out and may permanently seal the door for any evil dwells. May all those who do harm be bound by the holy angels and the spiritual hierarchy. So be it. Let light, love, and power Descend throughout the whole of Cuba. Let light, love, and power restore the divine plan. The whole of, the whole of Cuba 
and the surrounding areas. So be it. Just be still. Keep your tongue in your palate. Let the blessings flow through us. The stillness allows the energy to flow through us unimpeded. If you're sensitive, you might feel your hands tingling or a slight pressure in your head. That's how much energy is flowing through us. Let's do it again. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of every person, every being in the entire country of Cuba and the surrounding areas. Let light descend throughout the whole of Cuba. So be it. Bless every person, every being in Cuba and the surrounding areas with wisdom, with understanding, with realization that we are one, that by hurting others, we're hurting ourselves. Let there be discernment and divine understanding, so be it. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of every person, every being in Cuba and the surrounding areas. Let love descend throughout the whole of Cuba and the surrounding areas. Bless every person, every being with the heart to serve, to love, to forgive, to show mercy and compassion for all. So be it. Awaken the heart of mercy and compassion for all. So be it. From the center where the will of God is known, let divine purpose guide the wills of every person, every being in the whole of Cuba. The purpose which the holy masters in the spiritual hierarchy know and serve. Let good will and the willingness to do good permeate the minds of every person, every being in Cuba now. Bless every person, every being with the will to do good the will to serve. Not just talking about it, not just intending it, but taking action to be of service, to alleviate the suffering of others. So be it. From the center, which we call the Cuban people, let the plan of love and light work out and may permanently seal the door where any evil dwells. Let light, love, and power descend throughout the whole of Cuba and the surrounding areas. Let light, love, and power restore and manifest the divine plan the whole country of Cuba and the surrounding areas. So be it. So be it. So it is. Just be still. Flood the entire country with peace, with love, with stability, with healing, and divine protection. So be it. Now, imagine the entire earth. Just zoom out, just entire entire earth. As we say, the third great invocation, you can think of areas in the world that need blessings. Countries, people, areas. And let God's blessings flow through us. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of every person, every being. Let light descend throughout the entire earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of every person, every being. Let love descend throughout the entire earth. May God's messenger of love descend on earth.
from the center where the will of God is known, let divine purpose guide the wills of every person, every being, the purpose which the holy masters know and serve. Let goodwill and the willingness to do good descend toward the entire earth. From the center, which we call the human race, the angelic race, and all the other races, let the plan of love and light work out. And may it permanently seal and bound the door for any evil to us. Let light, love, and power descend throughout the entire earth. Let light, love, and power restore and manifest the divine plan on earth. So be it. Now be still, keep your tongue in your palate, let the blessings flow through us. Be still. Now, let us chant Om three times to seal the energy. Om. Om. on your lap and maintain your stillness. Keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Be still. Gently, slowly, come back to your body. Gently move your fingers and move your toes. Just gently come back. Let's give thanks to the Divine Supreme One, Divine Father, Mother. Thank you to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. To my beloved teacher, Master Twakok Sui, Mahaguji Main. Thank you in full faith, and so it is. All right. I think even if you're numb, <laughs> you might have felt something. That's how much energy is needed to bless those areas. I know some of you are requesting blessings for different countries, Venezuela, Lebanon. Uh, there's so many of them. So anyway, that's what the purpose of the third one is, to just pour that energy everywhere. And you can repeat this as often as you like. Okay? And the good news is we're doing this six times a week. <laughs> so... All right, so just participate. We keep doing it over, over, and over again. And again, I know there's always part of it that says, please bless this, please bless this country, please bless me, bless this, and bless that, right? Okay. Always remember, <laughs> there's a saying in the Philippines, God is not asleep. <laughs> okay? And what did Tony Robbins say? I heard him say, uh, God's delays are not God's denials. I'm, I'm watching this on stage. I'm, go, I'm looking, I'm going, he's supposed to be, you know, something to motivate you to be successful, yet when he threw that gem out, <laughs> it was amazing, at least for me it was. <laughs> God's delays 
are not God's denials. Our timeline is not God's timeline. Okay? Just keep that in mind. Because oftentimes, people look at God as a cosmic bellhop. Do this, do that, do this, bless this, bless that. <clears throat> yeah, right. <laughs> Good luck to you. There are many, many factors that are beyond our control. Many factors that are happening in the physical world and the inner world. And a big part of that in the inner world is controlled by karma. Okay? And as I always say, it's the law of karma, not your opinion of karma. <laughs> you don't believe in it or your perception of karma is not necessarily what's going on. Keep that in mind. Alrighty, so we will see you in 7 hours and 17 minutes for Anchor the Light Meditation tonight. Okay, thank you very much for your participation. Again, one of the reasons why the blessings are so powerful, not because I'm doing it, is because we are all doing it. So if you uh, you know, do the Wonder Woman thing, lasso more people <laughs> into the meditation, then there are more pipelines for the blessings to flow through. And we're doing our part instead of complaining. Remember, lighting other people's path lights your, light your own. Let's give thanks. To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, thank you. To all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. Personally, to my teacher, Master Tsukhoksi Mahaguji, thank you. In full faith, 